Why does my drawing look overworked? Well, I'm afraid it's almost certainly because it is overworked. And by that, what I mean is, well, what you're looking at now, which is a drawing that at some point has been at a better place, but we've just put too many lines in it. We've put too much detail in it. We've drawn the detail in an unhelpful way that's ended up looking too cluttered. We've started to go over lines that we've already drawn for some reason, making them thicker and darker and sometimes not even going over them very well. And the drawing ends up getting a blacker, more confused, often more cartoon-like appearance, none of which is what we wanted. But why does this happen? Why do we do it? And how can we stop? In general terms, I think overdrawing happens because we begin to draw without having a plan thought out and what we wanted to achieve and the effect that we were going to use, the techniques that we were going to use to create these effects. We hadn't thought of any of these things when we started drawing. And that's what causes the problem. There is one reason why drawing can look overworked that is quite separate from all the others. And it's the most simple and most perhaps obvious once we know. So I'll just get rid of it quickly. And that's we're simply using a pen that is too thick for the drawing that we're doing. For the size of the drawing or the amount of detail we want to draw for the techniques we're going to use to draw it, our pen is simply too wide and therefore the black line is too heavy. And overall, it ends up looking too much black liney. It's like not being able to see the wood for the trees. We can't see the drawing for the black lines for the ink that we've put on the paper. And a thinner pen line can make an enormous difference to the, the visual appearance of what we're doing. It's certainly something to consider. Always use a pen with intention. We choose our pen according to the size of the drawing, the detail we want to put onto it, the effects that we want to create. And of course, we may use more than one pen to do this effectively in a given drawing. But to move back to less clear cut black and white reasons why we might overwork our drawings, this happens in general terms because we're drawing too quickly. And I don't mean the speed with which we actually do our drawing, but we draw too quickly in that we start, we go to draw too quickly. We glance at our reference, we think we've seen what we need, and then we pick up our pen or we have our pen in our hand already and we start putting lines on papers straight away. The two things we haven't done enough is we haven't observed our reference enough. So we, we haven't even thought what really is there. What am I seeing exactly? How does it look in the reference? Because if I want it to look somewhat like that or based on that on my paper, then I need to have a really, a really strong idea of where I'm starting from. But secondly, I haven't thought enough. I haven't planned what am I wanting to do with my drawing? How do I want my drawing to look at the end? And what process will create that look, that technique? If we don't have a clear view of where we want our drawing to end up, is it any wonder that we get confused as to whether we've got there, as to whether we finished drawing or not, as to whether we need to add more or not? And it's in this confusion time, I think, particularly that a lot of the overdrawing takes place because we simply haven't known where our finishing point was going to be. We just keep drawing, therefore, past the, well, best point to have stopped. And while I continue to explain some of the reasons for this overdrawing, we'll go back to the start of this drawing and I'll let you see the process of decision making and marks and strategy for drawing that I took with it and also where I intended to finish it. But I had a very strong sense of I wanted this building to look very derelict. I wanted to capture the sagging, falling apart feel of the reference. Perhaps the most fundamental problem is that we're not really sure of what we're trying to do. And in some vague way, we think when we have a photo reference that we're copying the photo, that we're copying the reference. And what we want to end up with is a drawing that looks as much like the photo as we can possibly manage. And I want to suggest that this really is an inadequate starting point and causes a lot of the confusion because when does our drawing look 
as much like the photo as it could. And what about all the things of a photo that we simply can't do with a black line? The reality is, I think, that the reference is the starting point for our creativity. It's the starting point for our thinking, for our goal. We need to plan. We think, how do I want this to look at the end? And therefore, what do I need to do? Do I need to change some things, rearrange things so that it looks looks better or works towards my purposes better? I left out the left half of the building in this case. What about values, my lights and darks? Am I happy to copy them as they are in the reference? Do I want to make some areas lighter, some areas darker? Will that further the purposes I have, the creative intent I have for this scene at the end? What about depth of plane? Is there a great deal of depth of plane? How important will the effect of that depth be to the effect I want to create? And what particular techniques will we need? especially for things such as foliage and ground and grass and architectural decoration or brickwork or crowds, etc. What will be adequate or effective more than adequate for all of those things? We need to have a sense of what we're going to do before we start to draw so that then when we do start to put marks on the paper, we can do them with intent. And part of our problem, I think, is that we have an inadequate understanding of what drawing is that I think goes back to our childhood most of us start drawing as kids, copying cartoons or, or drawing with really what is just oversimplified symbols of houses or cats or flowers, trees. And with this cartoon mindset, this cartoon technique, we're encouraged to do very steady, even, continuous lines around the outside of the subject and other parts of the scene as well. And that's how cartoon characters are drawn. It's an, it's an oversimplification of what the character is meant to be and what the background and the scenery is meant to be. But it works well for the genre of cartoons. But it ends up often being somewhat simplified, not creating a very realistic look. Because the truth is when we look at objects, even if they have a very clear outline, they don't necessarily have the effect of a dark outline. And so lots of dark outline does not usually create a natural effect, any sense of realism. And we particularly have pro problems with subjects that we can't easily draw in this outline way, such as leaves and hair and crowds and massive any sort of detail. It particularly causes us trouble. And so we end up using too many heavy lines, which just increases the overworked look particularly often with bricks and tiles put on buildings. We feel the need to somehow draw them on. And what we end up drawing is more a pattern because it usually doesn't relate well enough to the perspective angles and to the scale of the size of the bricks or the stonework in our reference and then in our drawing. The effect is very black and overdone, but we didn't know what else to do. So we didn't plan what we're trying to do and we're thinking our goal is to copy the reference I'm not sure, therefore, if my drawing's finished because I'm not sure if I've copied it enough. Have I drawn enough of the detail? And so I sit looking at a drawing and I don't know what to do. So for some reason, I start going over what I've done, hoping that will help. Hmm, if my house doesn't look, I don't know, clear enough as a house, if it's getting lost in all my lines, maybe if I outline it more heavily, that will help. Or if there's any white paper left, I just keep adding more details of bricks or grass. Maybe if I do more grass, the ground will look more like ground and less like some sort of cartoon landscape. Or if I put in more leaves, maybe somehow my trees will look more real. And sadly, it just looks more and more overworked. Sometimes, I think because of these issues, we actually disconnect our thinking. We just get lost, we don't know what to do, and we get distracted bored, discouraged even. But the problem is we haven't taken our pen away from the paper. And so we keep drawing, we keep putting lines, even though we're now not drawing anything with any great purpose. And we're just going over what we've already done, hoping somehow that will make it better. We're just on autopilot now. And if I don't have clear intent for the marks I'm about to place, then I really need to take that pen away right away. And sometimes this problem is caused or made worse because I really haven't observed enough to be able to draw in a more sophisticated way. So because I don't have a clear visual memory of through my observation of what I'm wanting to draw that I can use as a basis then to create the effect of that, I slip back into a default childhood 
way of thinking or childhood memories or at least previous memories of what a house looks like or what a derelict house looks like. And I start to draw these memories. I draw from these memories because I don't have an idea of what's actually in the reference well enough. Because what we draw comes from how we think, if we're not happy with how our drawings look, then we have a problem with how we're thinking. We have to come up with a better way to approach the whole process, starting at choosing a reference, observing the reference, and translating the reference into marks on the paper. But I think here's a few ideas of how we can draw with greater intent and therefore have a greater, stronger sense of when we're finished and not fall into the trap of overworking. So firstly, we want to think out exactly what am I wanting my drawing to do, to say, to look like? What's the effect on someone looking at my drawing that I want it to have? Because now I can start to choose the best way to actually adapt my reference on my paper. Now I can start to think about what drawing techniques are going to be the best techniques to create this overall effect. It's not just what is my pattern for foliage, but it's what marks will create the effect of this shrub that's right in the front corner of our scene and I see in some detail. But then what marks will I use to create the shrub that's much further up the hill or the trees way in the distance coming over the hill? Because clearly the same pattern for foliage is not going to work if I want to create a sense of depth because each of those things visually appears very different in my reference. A symbol for the foliage in effect as a pattern is not going to do anything but look two-dimensional and look too heavy because there'll almost invariably be too many lines on it. I need to adjust the values. How am I going to create values? How am I going to create darkness with hatching or with an ink wash of some sort or with color? How will I adjust the composition? Do I need to eliminate some problems by moving things around or removing things completely to further the way I want my drawing to look? How is the overall level of detail that I'm hoping to use? But considering the pen size, the thickness of the pen, the paper size, how large my actual drawing will be, the time I've got to draw it, and of course the effect I want to have at the end. All of these things will lead me to consider what sort of marks I'm going to put where. The greater intent I have with what I do, the easier it is to work out when I've got there. I need to stop thinking of lines around shapes, of outlining things. I'm not drawing outlines. That's what I do if I'm drawing a cartoon. If I'm drawing form, three-dimensional shapes, then I need to be thinking of what marks are going to create a sense of this three-dimensional shape and use them. Not thinking one solid continuous line around the outside, let alone gone over two or three times, is going to capture that. And I especially need to plan how I create my effective depth, the sense of moving from the start to the back. And look, what is the focus point of my drawing? When someone glances at my drawing, what's the point? And why is it going to be the point that their eyes go to, that they'll land at this spot, and then I hope my drawing will encourage them to roam around the scene in more detail, to appreciate the things that I've created. Often that happens through the effects of light and dark and the way we've used detail or not used detail, the way we've got masses of lines or the way we've got white paper showing through. And that all helps me to draw it. It helps me to choose the right marks. I'm not just in a bored sense going over things or just drawing outlines of things on my reference on my paper, but I'm creating the visual effect that they have in the scene, but more than in the scene, the effect they have in real life. And because we now have much clearer intention with what we're trying to create in our drawing, through our drawing, and how we're going to do it, it's much easier for us to see when we've actually carried that plan, that strategy, those techniques to completion. We're far less likely to just go over and over something because we realize that we've achieved what we've been setting out to do before we do that. Let me show you how the two drawings look side by side. Here we have our two drawings, one where I just didn't know where to stop and one where I did. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If this is an issue that you have with your drawings, then I hope these thoughts have helped. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, whenever you stop or keep going, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.